What's up, guys? Okay, we are back. We are talking about new music video Friday. This Friday, 9 a.m., I'm dropping a brand new music video. Not tomorrow, because tomorrow's Thursday, but Friday. Brand new music video this Friday. Can't wait to give it to you guys. Um, I cried during the shoot in this music video. Um, so it's a special one to me. It's like completely different than anything that I've ever done before. So I hope you guys are prepared for, you know, something a little different, something new, something a little scary, especially for me. And that'll make sense when you see the video. Uh, it's about, you know, one of the most terrifying uh, experiences in my life. So this Friday, 9 a.m., brand new music video. There are two ways to see it first, as always. You can either A, join the official Hangover Gang newsletter, um, and then I will personally email you Friday morning when the video is ready, and you'll have the opportunity to see it before anybody else. So you can join the Hangover Gang newsletter, or B, you can subscribe to YouTube. And as you guys know, I'm like low-key shadow banned on YouTube, so if you subscribe on YouTube to see the new video, please turn your notifications on it's the only way you're going to see it. And it's just you click the little bell on my channel and it'll notify you on your phone or your computer or whatever. And uh, and yeah, and you'll get to see the video before anybody else. So, but yeah, the two ways, you either join the Hangover Gang newsletter or you subscribe to YouTube. I would suggest uh, joining the newsletter. That's how I stay in touch with people. I send all the discount th codes there. I send all the free MP3 downloads there. I send all the early ticket links to concerts there. So that's probably your best bet. Join the Hangover Gang newsletter. I will put the links in the comments of this live stream. As soon as I'm done, all you got to do is click on the link, enter your email address, and you're good. I'll personally email you Friday morning with the link to the video. Um, so we'll talk more about the music video. But if you're super duper curious about what this music video is about and sort of the topic and, you know, you want a little more extra information... Tomorrow morning at 9 a.m., I will be dropping the artwork for this song. So if you meet me here tomorrow on my Facebook page at 9 a.m., I'm going to drop the artwork. And then you'll see the song title, and you'll be able to make guesses from there about what the song might be about. And I think it'll be pretty clear, as all my other releases have been pretty clear, when the artwork comes out, you know what the song is going to be. So, new music video Friday, 9 a.m., Tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'll drop the artwork for the song so you guys can see what it's about. There's two ways to see the video first. You can either A, subscribe to YouTube or B, join the Hangover Gang newsletter. I will put links to both those things in the comments of this live stream. When you see my comment, please give it a like and push it up in the feed. Um, what else do I got to talk about before I start taking questions? Yo, I know a lot of people ordered their album uh, their autographed album like a few days ago. I've been waiting on bubble mailers. I've been wanting to send out your albums, but I can't just put them in like an envelope and send them because they, they arrive at your house fucked up and the CD package is messed up and the CD scraped. So I'm only sending albums and bubble mailers. The good news is I got the bubble mailers today. So pretty much when I get off this live stream, I'm going to start packing your albums and then the first batch will go out tomorrow morning. And then the second batch will go out the day after that, and it should be done by then. So I just want you guys to know the bubble mailers have arrived. I've already autographed all the albums. I'm going to start packing them tonight. So this is the only thing. Because they're not being sent out till tomorrow morning and the next day, if you want an autographed album, go to hangovergang.com and grab one now. You lucked out. You still have like 12 hours to do it because I was waiting on the bubble mailers. So if you want an autographed copy of Death Threats, boom, 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 20 songs long, or an autographed copy of Ghost Stories, 21 songs long, or you want to buy them in the package together, that's cool, but go do it now at hangovergang.com because I'm printing the labels tonight and putting them, putting them in their bubble mailers tonight. So if you want an autographed album, www.hangovergang.com. Also, low-key, the demand for these ski masks was like so high that I like sold out of them and ran out in a day. So I got 20 more. I got 20 more ski masks. So if you want a ski mask, I'm sending them out at the same time as the albums, like tomorrow and the next day. So hit hangovergang.com, grab your ski mask while you still can. 
There's a white space on the inside of the masks thing. I'm gonna sign them all and I'll put them in the package with your CDs. So that's all the merch promo I'm gonna do. Um, but yeah, that's what it is. You got 12 hours because I was late on the bubble mailers. Well, actually the bubble mailers were late on me, but you got 12 hours. Hangovergang.com, grab your signed albums, grab your ski mask. Um, wait, I gotta rant for a minute. Will you guys bear with me while I rant for a minute, please? I've been having like a lot of people lately, especially on Instagram, but a few people on Facebook too, that have just been bitching about like, all you ever do on Instagram is try and sell merch. Like, all you ever do on Facebook is try and sell merch. And it's just like, yo. Like, I don't know if they forgot. No manager, no agent, no PR, no marketing, no publicist, no record label, no team, no nothing. It's just me. It's just me and my girlfriend doing all this stuff. We didn't get a $250,000 advance from a record label. We don't have agents out there procuring work for us and getting us money. I'm an independent musician. I have to sell my music. I have to sell my t-shirts. And it's very upsetting that people are so angry about that. I feel like it's like they think I'm selfish or something. I feel like there's a lot of great artists out there. Nobody releases as much music as me. Nobody releases as many videos as me. Nobody puts as many streaming songs on, on their Spotify as me on a consistent basis. I spend like eight, nine, 10 hours a day autographing every single album because I want to give you something cool to hold in your hands. You know what I mean? I stay at shows when I'm exhausted on the road. I stay in the venue till 3 a.m. Signing every single t-shirt, shaking every single hand, posing for every single photo, talking to people and hugging people and high-fiving and doing all that. So I just feel like I give a lot of myself to the people that support me because I love you guys. And I really do love you guys. But yeah, there's like a few people that are saying, all you do is try and sell merch. And it's just like, yo, bro, well, I, I'm not a machine. I'm not a record label. I'm an independent musician. And I'm trying to support myself. Do you understand how much music videos cost? Do you understand how much music production costs? This is a very expensive business to try and make a living in. So I have to sell my merch. I have to sell my t-shirts. I have to sell my music. That's what this whole thing is about. You don't just get to sit in the studio all day and pour your heart out on songs and that like, that doesn't pay the bills. You have to put it out into the world and have people purchase it and shit. So anyways, to all those people that were bitching at me about, you sell too much merch online. Fuck you. Kiss my ass. To everyone that's been supporting, that's got like the autographed albums and the t-shirts and the ski masks and the, all that stuff comes to the shows, man. I love you guys so much. Thank you guys so much. You are truly, truly the reason that I'm still breathing today, man. You're the reason that I can uh, do my groceries, take care of my girlfriend and feed my dog. So thank you guys so much. It really, truly means the world for me, man. Uh, hangover gang forever and a motherfucking day. I love you. Um, so yeah, there's that. Uh, I had to, I had to say it. I had to do it. I didn't want to do it, but I had to do it. Uh, such is life. So, um, the other thing is this, if you just joined new music video on Friday at 9am, like I said, it's a super special one. It's a terrifying video for me to shoot, terrifying song for me to write. I believe in like telling your own future with your music sometimes. And uh, for that reason, this was a very terrifying song to put out into the world, to put out into public and to give to you guys. It's just a scary concept. It's a scary thing. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to cross my fingers, man. It's completely different than anything I've ever done before. I hope you guys love it. I love it. Like I said, I cried when I was on set because it just really hits me in a real place. So um, I hope you guys enjoy it. The one other thing before I get into taking your guys' questions, I just gotta say this. I know a lot of you guys have come and seen me in concert before. I'm sure a lot of you haven't. I have 22 shows coming up in November. I leave here in two weeks to hit the road and go on tour and smash out 22 shows and hang out with you guys and do the damn thing. So um, if you want tickets, go to www.hangovergang.com, click on the tour tab, 
and grab tickets to his show. I'd absolutely love to see you guys out there. I can't wait. It's going to be a blast. I'm on the road with like a really incredible rock band called Falling in Reverse. And we're going to tear it the fuck down every single night for you guys. So I hope I see you guys on the road. It's great being friends on the internet. This is super far out. I love it. But you know what is the coolest part of everything is like shaking hands and meeting everybody at the shows and like igniting that like real life connection. So I can't wait. I love you guys. It's very, very dope. Um, so yeah, we'll circle back and do the whole thing in a minute, but I'm here. So if you have any questions, shoot them out there, man. I'm going to, uh, I'll read your name and then I'll read your question and I'll do my best to answer it. So I'm hanging out. If you got a good question, fire away. I'm seeing a lot of people commenting and saying really nice things. Thank you guys so much. But if you got questions, get them in there. I guess while I'm waiting for some questions to come in, I'll just say, because my video and your comments are like a little bit behind. So even if I'm like, hey, give me some questions, I usually have to wait like about two minutes before they come in. So I'll just say um, one more thing uh, about the music video. New music video this Friday, 9 a.m. Two ways to see it first. You can either subscribe to YouTube or join the Hangover Gang newsletter. I'd like it if you subscribe to the newsletter. I'll personally email you Friday morning with a link to the video. You'll see it before anybody else. The newsletter is also where I send all the discount codes, MP3 downloads, early access to tickets, uh, tour dates, blah, 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 blah. So I'll put the link in the comments. All you got to do is enter your email and then it adds you to my list and I'll send you an email personally Friday morning. Um, with the new video and blah, 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 blah. So, um, I'll put the links in the comments. When you see my comment, give it a like, it'll push it up in the feed and make it easier for other people to find my comment. So let's do that. Okay, here we go. Travis Peruch says, would you ever collab, uh, with someone like NF? Yeah. NF's cool, man. Like I said, I'm not big on collabs. I don't do like a lot of features and stuff. A, because I work super duper fast. By the time I've conceptualized an out, a, a song, I usually conceptualize the song while I'm making the beat. So by the time the beat's done, I have the verses in my head. I write the verses, then I sit down, me and Nova craft the chorus together and put it out there. So it's just like uh, I work fast and also it's like such a personal thing for me. It's really hard to um, collaborate with other people just because because it means so much to me. I hold it so close to my heart. It's just hard to give a piece of that away. A lot of people ask about Upchurch. The thing with Upchurch is, the reason why I did the song with Upchurch is because this. When my stuff first blew up and a lot of people were hating on me and saying that I was a piece of crap and a terrible rapper and blah, 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 blah. Upchurch was the first guy that reached out to me and was like, hey, bro, I believe in what you're doing. I love your stuff. I'm a fan. Da da da. So I got like nothing. I got infinite love for Upchurch. I don't care what people say about him. I don't care what they think of his views. I don't care what they think of his music. I don't give a shit. I think he's fucking dope. I'll hold down Upchurch forever. So um, that's the thing about why I did the Upchurch feature. Because I love that fucking guy. So, but yeah. Uh, NF's definitely on the list, man. I I, I, I work with NF. He's, he's hard. Um... Joshua says, can you tell my son Gabriel happy birthday? Happy birthday, Gabriel. Hope it's a good one, man. You got a long way to go, so keep hanging in there and being strong. Um, a lot of people are asking if I'm coming to their uh, city and stuff on tour, so I'll just say this one time. You can go to my website, www.hangovergang.com, click on the tour section, or just scroll down on the main page. You'll see the tour posters with all of my dates underneath it. So you can see what cities I'm in, what venues I'm playing, the date of the show, etc. You can also grab tickets straight off the website. So if you have a question about your city in regards to tour, hangovergang.com. Check it out there. Uh, Rob Anderson says, when are we going to wrestle one last match? For those of you who don't know, I was a pro wrestler once upon a time before I was a rapper. Um... When am I going to wrestle one last match? Or when are we going to wrestle one last match? Well, Rob, I love you, bro. And we always had good matches. And you're always a good friend of mine. And you always treated me good. But I'm telling you that my next wrestling match and my last wrestling match will be in the WWE. There's no more school gymnasiums for this guy. So 
Lexi Heron says, what do we have to look forward to in 2020? Anything special? Well, I'm working on a couple top secret projects that I can't tell you right now, which are going to blow minds. I'm working on my album. Um, I'm just writing my album. I'm not recording or anything right now, but I'm, I'm, I'm writing my album. I'm working on some top secret projects. I got another solo tour that I'm announcing for early 2020. Um, and yeah, I'm just like not a big plan way ahead type of guy. I'm like, uh, I'm just, you know, living day by day and just taking it as it comes. So my best ideas tend to come in the moment. So I'm just gonna, you know, aside from I'm releasing another album, I have like three or four projects that I'm tentatively going to be releasing in 2020. So I think that's pretty special. 2020 will definitely be filled with more music and more videos than I've ever released in my life. So there's that. Justin uh, Blazier says, how many cups of sugar does it take to get to the moon? Um, how many cups of sugar does it take to get to the moon? I don't like stacking cups of sugar. I don't think you can get to the moon with a cup of sugar. You probably need like a rocket ship or like some really good DMT or something. Um, I'm scrolling through your questions. Krista Moore says, hey, Tom, when you're not doing your beautiful music or signing CDs, what is something that you do in your free time? Man... I wish free time is like this often fabled, extremely elusive thing in my life. Like I don't really have a lot of free time. When I have free time, I'm working. All my time's filled with work. Usually at night, um, literally twice in the past, or maybe three or four times in the past like six months, I've had an evening to myself, like a few hours where I sit down with Nova and we play some video games and stuff like that. But that's like really it. It's just like so go, 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 go. There's so much work to do and so many things to accomplish. I don't really have a lot of free time. When I do have downtime, I like to do stuff where I just don't have to think because I think so goddamn hard all day long. If I have a minute to myself, I play some video games and I just chill. Eric Wood says, after 12 hours, no more autographed copies available. He's asking about the signed albums because the bubble mailers just came in and blah, 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 blah. Okay, check it out. After 12 hours passes, autographed albums will be available, but I don't know when they're going to get sent out. Okay, so the next shipment is tomorrow morning. And the next shipment after that is the day after that. And then that will be all of the albums that have been ordered up to that date. So if you order the next day, not tomorrow or the next day, but the next day after that, you can order it. I'm just not sure when it's going to ship. I'll do one more shipment before I leave to go on tour in two and a half weeks, but that shipment might not leave for two weeks. So I'm just letting you know that if you want your album in a timely manner and you want it now, now's the time to order it because the shipments are going out for the next two days. If you order after that, it'll still ship to you sometime in the next two weeks, but it's an extra two weeks that you're gonna have to wait. So there you go. Hangovergang.com if you want any autographed albums, ski masks, t-shirts, etc. <coughs> Pardon me. Daniel says, uh, what are your favorite songs you like to perform on the album? Um, this last tour, I really enjoyed. I always, my favorite song to perform is Politically Incorrect. All day long. Have a blast with that. Everybody sings along and stuff. Buttholes, this last tour was the first time I ever performed it. Amazing song to perform live. Everybody has a really good time. They all know the words. They're singing along. Wicked. Uh, I'm sorry is a blast because we just go ape shit and the room just like vibrates. It's awesome. And everybody hates me is a super duper blast. Um, love performing that and probably I wish, um, cause I know that that song means a lot to people. It means a lot to me. We all get to have a moment together. Super duper cool. Sam Kenpo says, hey, Tom, how did you come up with the song Sad Rappers? It's my favorite songs and it speaks to me. I always curi curious what inspired it. Um, yeah, man, Sad Rappers, like, I don't know. I just like felt like there was all of these like sad rappers coming out and they were just like glorifying antidepressants and anti-anxiety uh, medication. And they were just ro romanticizing suicide and romanticizing mental illness. 
And to me, it's just like, yo, people actually die from this shit. Like, I struggle extremely hard with my mental health. I'm never going to romanticize that to my fans. Like, it's some beautiful, like, this painfully dark and beautiful thing that artists deal with. It's just fucking bullshit, man. Um, so my whole thing was, I saw these sad rappers coming out. I heard, like... Um, top 40 and mainstream artists talking about anxiety and depression and PTSD and stuff like that on the radio. And then I just thought to myself, okay, um, you know, Sean Mendez is singing about suicide and anxiety right now. I wonder if he really deals with that. So then I went home and I jumped on Google and I Googled the songwriting credits and found out that the songwriting credits for that song were 14 people long. So to me, it's just like, if it takes 14 people to write a song about anxiety or depression, it's probably not true to you. It's probably bullshit. What I think it is, is the internet fucked the music game up. Now it's hard to sell music these days. So the labels are struggling and they're trying to figure out where can we get our next dollar? Where's the next avenue of income going to come from? So they know that there's pockets of people out there that deal with depression, that deal with anxiety, that deal with PTSD, that deal with schizophrenia, that deal with OCD, that deal with mental health shit. So they're packaging up their artists because the people out there that are struggling with mental health want two things. One, they want to be understood. And two, they just want help. That's it. So the record label is using artists to promise people that they're being understood and to promise people that their music can help. And they're only making those promises because they know that people will buy the music with their money. And that's it. It's dirty fucking pool. So that's where that line came from. Uh, uh, they don't want to make you better. They want you looking to them for answers with your visa or your debit. That's it. It's a false promise to get your money in return for no help and no understanding. It's a branding thing and it's bullshit. So here we go. Ryan says, does Nova, Nova tour with you or, does she, or do you go slow, solo? Nova tours with me all the time. So if you come to a Tom McDonald show, you're also coming to a Nova Rockefeller show, which is pretty fucking cool. It's a lot of bang for your buck. So I'm just going to circle back really quick and then I'll keep, I'll jump right back into the questions. Give me like literally 30 seconds. New video this Friday at 9 a.m. It's completely different than anything I've ever done before. It's one of my favorite songs I've ever wrote. Uh, there's two ways to see it first. You can either subscribe to YouTube or join the Hangover Gang newsletter. I will put links to both of those things in the comments when I'm done here. If you join the newsletter, I will personally email you Friday morning with the link to the video. You'll see it before anybody else. Tomorrow at 9 a.m., I'm dropping the artwork for the song. So if you want to know what the song's called or speculate about what the song's about, meet me here tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'll give you guys the artwork and we'll let the speculation commence then. Um, signed albums, you got 12 hours to do it right here. I sign, I autograph every single copy. This is like four and a half, five hours of music between these two albums, 20 songs on death threats, 21 songs on ghost stories, all produced by myself. I'd appreciate it if you guys picked them up. Thank you very much. They go in the mail tomorrow. I also ordered 20 more ski masks because you guys bought them all. So I got 20 more in case anybody else wants one. Um, there's also t-shirts and blah, 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 www.hangovergang.com. I'm going on tour in November, 22 dates, hit hangovergang.com, check out the cities, check out the venues and check out the dates, grab some tip tickets. And I hope you come see me on the road. It's going to be a good time. Um, and we'll move on from there. New video Friday, 9am. I hope you guys enjoy it. I'll answer some more questions now. Ace says, what are your favorite things about being independent? Um, it's great, man. Total freedom, total creative freedom. I don't have to bend over backwards to, you know, meet anybody else's guidelines or uh, rules of good practice or whatever. I get to make the music that I want. I get to make it as fast or as slow as I want. I get to say what I want. I, my artistic integrity will always remain absolutely intact. I don't have to, you know, change my message or censor my message or alter my message in any way. I don't have to deliver anybody else's message. The only narrative that I have to present is my own. I don't have to care about anybody else's agenda or what anybody else wants. I just get to do me. So that's the best part. Also, like, 
I mean, I feel like if you're on a big label or something, <clears throat> you're kind of out of touch with your fans. I'm like totally tuned in with my fans. I talk to them all the time. I message them. I respond to tons of comments on my posts and stuff. I don't think big label artists have the opportunity to do that because it's just all about like public appearances and branding and stuff. And they don't want you talking to people and being personal because who knows what you might say or who knows what you might express and blah, 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 blah. I don't have to worry about any of that. I just get to do my thing and it's great. Bradley Ross says, will you be releasing albums to buy for digital download? I want to bump it in my headphones and I can't play my science CD. Yeah, eventually I'm going to put the albums out on digital. It's just like to me, it's like my music is different. I'm not on a label. I promote my stuff different. My videos are different. I want to present my music in a different way. Like I miss when CDs existed. I was the kid who was sitting outside of the, the CD store at 8 a.m. before it opened and I'd rush in and grab my album and pay for it and I'd go home and I'd unwrap it and read the booklet and play it in my room and sit by myself and get to hold it in my hands. So it's just like, I wanna give something to people that's special, something that's physical, something they can hold on to. And it's like, I feel like we're just building this giant empire right now and every CD sold is like literally a brick in the wall. And I just want people to be able to hold that brick and show their friends, yo, I helped do this. I helped create this CD. I helped write these songs. I helped release this album. I really helped. I play a role in that guy's career. He's an independent artist. He doesn't have a label, a manager, an agent, PR, marketing, nothing. He has me and his supporters and that's it. So this CD, this is us. That's why I sell CDs. I think it's a special experience. Um, that's really the bottom line. So hangovergang.com if you want a signed album. Uh, it's your brick in the wall. Show it off. Tell your friends that you helped make it because you did. I love you guys. Thank you so much. Uh, Richard says, what country are you most excited about touring outside of the U.S.? Um, I love America so much, man. I love the U.S. so much. I love the people. I love the country. Like, it's just, to me, bro, I'm from Canada. I'm Canadian and I love Canada. I love Canada. But like, geez, man, United States might be the best country in the world. Canada is fantastic. Maybe they tied for number one. I don't know. But I can't wait to tour Canada. I can't wait to tour the UK. Uh, I know I have a lot of fans in Canada and a lot of fans in the UK. I have uh, a lot of fans in Australia, so I'd like to hit Australia. But I think Canada and the UK are sort of like pretty high up on my list. What's up, Terry? That's my girlfriend's dad. Terry's hanging out. He's really pissed off that Justin Trudeau got reelected in Canada, as anybody in their right mind should be, because fuck Justin Trudeau. Giant pussy. Um... But hey, hi, my girlfriend's dad. Um, Ryan J. Shufty says, where's this room that you're always going live in? It's a secret bunker. It's not on Google Maps. It's uh, We're actually about like 55 feet underground right now. It's a bomb shelter that I just use for my live streams. And there's a closet over here on the right that has about 9,000 cans of food in it and about um, 500 liters of water. Just in case the whole world goes to shit, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be in my bomb shelter, live streaming, eat my canned beans and drinking my water. Um, Corey Pulling says, if you ever got a chance, would you? what would you partake in, WWE or AEW? Look, I'd be happy to be part of either one of those companies. Any pro wrestler that you ask, where do you want to wrestle? If they say AEW over WWE, they're a fucking liar. WWE is the show. I don't care how cool AEW is, what talent they have. WWE is the show forever. If you're a real pro wrestler, that's where you want to end up. Bottom line. Um, Fred Smith says, is your next video, my video that's releasing this Friday at 9 a.m., is your next video going to be a song off your album? I can't tell you that. I can't say if it is and I can't say if it's not. Who knows? <coughs> Pardon me, guys. I'm still sick. 
feeling a lot better than I was a few days ago when I live streamed, but it's still like lingering. Like you can hear it in my voice. I'm still coughing a little bit. Sometimes just going on tour just takes the world out of you and it's taken me a minute to build it back. And I'm working so much all day, every day, and I'm not sleeping as much as I should. I am getting better a little bit every day. Not as fast as I would like to because I'm so effing busy. But uh, so just bear with me. I'm sorry. You know, it's not contagious. You guys are going to be okay. I'm not going to catch it on live stream. Even though that's a really tight concept for like an episode of Black Mirror, like sicknesses becoming uh, contagious via technology and the internet. Great idea, Black Mirror. You heard it here first. But I'm drinking my tea and I'm getting better. So, Jamie Skinner says, how long have you had your hair like that? How long did it take to grow that length? Uh, it's, I don't know. It's taken years to grow this length. I never cut it or trim it. And if I did, it would probably grow out a lot faster. But I'm not like, you know, I'm not out here getting manicures. Look at how busted my nails are. I'm not out here getting manicures and taking care of my hair like I should. I'm getting tattoos and working on music. So um, it's been like this for years and years and it took years and years to grow. So Ryan says, will you ever do a live tour of your crib? No, probably not. That's weird. Would it be cool? I don't know how good the sound is on these live streams, but what if I did like some sort of live performance on live stream and it'd be like an internet concert and everybody could come hang out and I'd rap some songs and do the whole thing. Would that be cool or would that be lame? Somebody tell me how the music is or how the sound is on live streams because it might just come off super busted, but we'll see. Corey says, or fuck not Corey, Ace says, would you like to kick my ass in a rap battle? No, I'm done making people famous by dissing them to tiny pieces and rap songs. It's over. Um, mm -mm -mm -mm. Chrissy Ferry says, are you concerned for your life at all after putting out clone rappers? That is a very, very good question. Um, as you guys know, I've always been, you know, fuck the system and fuck the man and anti-establishment, anti-authority, all that put on for the underdogs. You already know that's my thing. So, yeah, man. It crosses my mind all the time. And a lot of weird things have happened in my life, especially after I started releasing a lot of the more like, you know, controversial songs that I've released. Um, that's what I'm really scared about tomorrow's release is that like, it could mean some bad things for me. That's why I cried when we were making the video because it was terrifying. Um, so yeah, am I scared? Fucking right, I'm scared, man. I'd be stupid to not be scared. But at the same time, the greatest mistake that you'll ever make in your life is living in fear. So I don't have space for that shit. It crosses my mind sometimes. Hell yeah, it does. I'm just a person, man. I think about it. But I'm not out here. I'm not going to be living, looking over my shoulder every day. I'm not, you know, not going to be out here living in fear. I'm not going to be out here living scared, man. I do what the fuck I do. I say what the fuck I want to say. I say it when the fuck I want to say it. I say it however the fuck I want to say it, to whoever the fuck I say it, wherever the fuck I decide to say it. So if that ends up being some gnarly shit in my life at some point in time, so fucking be it. I'd rather just say what I want, when I want, where I want, how I want, to who I want, than censor all that shit and, and just live without speaking my mind forever. So that's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that anymore, man. Thank you. Big love to you for that. Sherry Blackwell. Sherry Blackwell says, how do you come up with the designs for your t-shirts? Um, I design them all myself. I'm kind of a wizard on the computer. So I draw a lot of pictures and then I scan them and then take them into Photoshop and make them something else. And yeah, so that's the other thing. If you guys get a t-shirt or like a ski mask or whatever, but mainly t-shirts, I designed all those designs myself. So my last three t-shirts with my face on it, there's one with my face that says Hangover Gang Forever, and I got like a knife sticking through my head. There's another shirt with like a bunch of Grim Reapers standing together. It says Strength Without Numbers. <coughs> and there's a skeleton wrapped in barbed wire with arrows stuck in it on fire, like a really rattled skeleton. And it says like, cuffs or coffins, hell or high water, daggers or uh, ditches, uh, guillotines or gallows. Uh, in Hangover Gang We Trust. Those three shirts, I collaborated with like one of my favorite artists of all time. 
he actually is from my hometown in Canada, and I just always admired his art. We went to school together, believe it or not, in high school, and then he just blew up and became this like incredible artist, and I was doing the rap thing, and I was like, yo, bro, I got an idea for these three shirts. Can you draw me some stuff? So he drew up some like absolutely incredible designs. So if you go on the website, you'll see them. They're the uh, sort of like death metal type designs. Uh, hangovergang.com. Check them out. Olivia says, have you ever messed up making a video before? Shit, I mess up making videos all the time. What, what does that mean though? That's a loaded question. I've screwed up shoots. I've screwed up my words. I've lost cameras. I've fucking showed up late. I've done all sorts of stupid shit. So... Ace says, are you planning to write any more metal rap or rock rap? Uh, I thought that was epic. Yeah, on my album, Ghost Stories, there's a song called Culture Vulture, which is like the most metal song I've ever made in my life. It's probably one of my favorite songs I've ever made in my, my life. I'm not writing it off. It's not really like my MO. I just like to make the music that I like to make. Sometimes it's metal, sometimes it's rock, sometimes it's hip hop, sometimes it's folk, sometimes it's spoken word, whatever. So I'm just going to keep doing what I feel like doing. Um... Okay, Julia says, I had a friend request come from you. How do we know if it's really you? Okay, here's the thing. If you get a friend request from Tom McDonald or Hangover Gang or whatever, it's not me. I don't send friend requests. This is my Facebook. It's a page. It doesn't even allow me to send friend requests. So if somebody's sending you a friend request, it's from a personal profile, a fake personal profile. And like, I think it's pretty easy to tell. You join the page, everything's spelt wrong. It looks like shit. They're like, they're like, give me your credit card number and I'm going to send you $10,000 and like enter this contest and blah, 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 blah. I don't do that shit. I don't need your fucking credit card number. I appreciate that you trust me enough to give it to me, but I don't need your credit card number. I don't want your credit card number. The person that's adding you on Facebook is not Tom McDonald. It's like a fucking Nigerian prince that needs your credit card number so he can send you $3 million. It's just like, no. It's a person like struggling somewhere in a third world country trying to con you out of money. So that, let me be very clear about that. I, I did not send you a friend request. It wasn't Tom McDonald. It was Nigerian Prince. And I don't need your credit card number. Even though I appreciate it. Thank you. Don't give anybody your credit card number. Even if you think it might be me. Okay. If I hit rock bottom one day and start smoking crack and I hit you up and ask for a credit card number, don't give it to me. Okay, don't do that. Uh, 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 uh. Dante says, would you be open to doing a feature? I already talked about it. I don't really do features. I just make music by my lonesome because that's what I enjoy doing. Don't really do features. I appreciate it though. Thank you. Tracy says, what video game system do you play on? I have a PlayStation and I have an Xbox and I got the PSVR thing. So I just bounce back and forth depending on who has the best games at the time. Lakota says, what's your favorite scents for fall and winter? Pumpkin pie, gingerbread, candy canes, pines? That's a good question. My girlfriend gets a lot of like uh, scented candles. And like, I guess I like the cinnamon ones and uh, the pine ones are really good. Gingerbread's cool. I never really just thought about dividing candles or scents by season before. I think that might be a girl thing. Um, yeah, scented candles are cool though. Ryan J. Shuffy says, what kind of cologne do you wear? I don't wear cologne. Uh, Brandy says, you, have, you said you have 22 tour dates. Are they in the U.S.? Yes, all 22 tour dates are in the United States. So check them out, hangovergang.com. Andrea says, what's your favorite food? Do you enjoy spicy food? Yes, I love spicy food. It's not very good for my stomach. I have really bad, uh, it's called GERD, uh, acid reflux, and it fucks up my throat and my stomach gets all fucked up. So I stay away from spicy food, but I do really enjoy it. My favorite food's pasta. That's it. Pasta, pasta, pasta. I don't know how people say it. Pasta, pasta, pasta. I like pasta. Whoa, that was fucking weird. I said that a lot. 
Uh, carbonara pasta is my favorite. That's what I rock with. Um, Gary says, which one of your tattoos means the most to you? I've showed you guys this one before. I'm a little fat right now, so don't judge me. But this one, this skeleton right here, it says, if you don't know where the fire started, you will surely burn in it. That's, that's one that means the most to me, man, because uh, that's how I just viewed my fucking mental health stuff. If you don't know where the fire started, you will surely burn in it. Um, because, you know, there's all types of medicines and pills and stuff that you can take for mental health. But it's really just like a Band-Aid. The wound still exists underneath the Band-Aid. So it's about looking deeper than the medication, finding where the problems are inside you, going to therapy and working through that stuff, identifying the problems and solving them from within. Um, and that will stop the pain and the torment and the turmoil. The pills only mask it. If you don't know where the fire started, you will surely burn in it. That's that. Sean says, how do you feel about the Canadian election? Uh, I mean, I don't really give a shit. I don't, I, I don't care about politics that much. I talk shit about it and stuff, but I'm not, I don't follow it. I don't, I, and, and like the Canadian prime minister has no bearing on my life at all. The decisions he makes d does not affect me. So I just, I don't give a shit about it. Uh, TJ says, have you ever considered a bundle like a CD shirt and a hat for a set price? It'd be sweet. Yeah, I sold out of all the merch packs. I think the only merch packs we have left are you can get a ski mask and an album or you can get both albums together. Oh, there's t-shirt album combos too. You can get a t-shirt in an album pack. So there are merch packs, but all the ones that came with like ball caps, hurt shirts, necklaces, albums, ski masks, etc. The big merch packs are all sold out, but there's still a bunch of smaller merch packs there if you want them. Hangovergang.com. Michael Stone says, which rapper inspired you to come up with the lyrics and to become the rapper you are today? Um, I don't think it was a rapper that inspired you know, the way that I am today. Literally, I was rapping about the same old shit that everybody was rapping about with for a long time. Go listen to my older music. You'll hear it. Just talking about the same shit that everybody else was talking about. And then I had like a mental breakdown three years ago and almost died. And I found out like who was important to me, what was really important to me, what I was thinking about and what I wanted to talk about and how I wanted to talk about it. Um, and then that was the, you know, the come to Jesus moment, the defining moment that changed the trajectory of my life forever. That's why I say the mental breakdown was the worst thing that ever happened to me, but it was also the best thing that ever happened to me because it taught me a lot about myself. It taught me what I give a shit about. And now I just make music about stuff I give a shit about. If you're making music to be the cool guy at the party, you should just shut the fuck up and stop making music. If you're not making music to help yourself and to help other people, then you have no business being in this industry, period. That's really how I feel. Um, okay, so let me just circle back one time. I'll take more questions. I have a new music video dropping this Friday at 9 a.m. It's two ways to see it first. You can either join the Hangover Gang newsletter or you can subscribe to YouTube. If you join the newsletter, I will personally email you this Friday with a link to the video. You'll see it before anybody else. That's also where I send all my free downloads, discount codes, early access to tickets, etc. So join the newsletter. If you subscribe to YouTube, click the bell on my page and turn the notifications on. You'll be notified when every video for the rest of time drops. And that's a good way to see the video first. Um, the artwork for the new video drops tomorrow at 9 a.m. If you want to speculate about what the song's about, you want to learn the song title, you want a little inside information, etc. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. on this page, I will drop the artwork for the video. Comment on it. Let me know what you think. Tell me what your theory is. Let's get it. Tomorrow at 9 a.m. The video's Friday at 9 a.m. The artwork's tomorrow at 9 a.m. The bubble mailers were late. The bubble mailers were late, so you have 12 more hours. If you want your signed album, if you want your autographed album in this next shipment, you have 12 hours. Ding, you get an autographed copy of Death Threats, an autographed copy of Ghost Stories. There's 20 songs on this one, 21 songs on this one. Together, it's like five hours of music. I think you can get them both for 20 bucks on the website um, in a package deal, or 25 bucks. It's cheap. Um, I sign them all myself, I ship them all myself, label them all myself, package myself, etc. These ski masks were selling at an alarming rate, which is kind of scary, but I'm glad you guys like them. They better not end up on the news if any of you guys are robbing banks or doing any silly shit like that. But I got the ski masks are back in stock. I only have 20 left. I only ordered 20 more because the other ones sold out so fast. Albums, 
T-shirts and ski masks are at hangovergang.com. Enjoy yourselves. I have 22 shows coming up in November. Hangovergang.com to see venues, cities, tour dates, and grab tickets. That was a lot of information I just crammed in there, but there you go. I'm back into your questions now. Jon Snow is asking if I'll watch the uh, fucking Big Brother, if he gets on Big Brother Canada. Sure, I'll tune in and watch you on Big Brother Canada. Um, Someone says, how did you shave your head? But now you have hair. I guess a lot of people thought I really shaved my head for the Clone Rappers video. I didn't shave my head. There's no way in hell I'm going to shave my head. What happened was we braided my hair back tight against my head, then put like a bald cap over top, glued it to my head, painted the bald cap to match my skin, and then added texture and stuff to the bald cap. So when you see clone rappers, the video that I did about clones and stuff like that, that literally just got picked up by the UK's like biggest tabloid, the Daily Star, which is hilarious. If you see clone rappers, the video, and you see me with a bald head... That's not because I shaved my head. That's because I spent five or six hours in a makeup chair playing video games. Super taxing. (coughs) Heather Roney says, how is your life today uh, different from this time last year? Way busier. That's my main thing. Way busier, working super duper hard every single day. Um, my big thing is I always just want to outdo myself. So I'm trying to release more music, better music, better albums, more albums, cooler videos, more videos, um, tour more, do more shows, have a better live show. So it's just like busy, 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 busy. It's like it started out with this little snowball rolling down a hill and now it's turned into this massive fucking you know, avalanche, and I'm just trying to keep up with it constantly. So life is super duper busy. It's worth it. Thank God I have amazing people like yourselves at my side and at my back, keeping six and holding me down. It truly does make it all worth it to me. Um, So yeah, you guys make it worth it. I love you. Thank you so much. Let's go on to the next one here. Um, Damian Lucas says, can you put on the biker vest I made for you? I want to I want to show the Hangover Gang fam my hard work. Okay, check it out. I'm not... Here, hold on. Remember when I talked about, like, labels? If you're on a label, you can't stay in touch with your fans. You can't stay plugged in. I just saw Damien. Damien Lucas. Just just put a comment in this live stream. Can you put the biker vest I made on? I want to show Hangover Gang fam my hard work. Okay, this is how in touch with my fans are. I know Damien. I know when his, when his face pops up. Damien made this vest for me and gave it to me at a show on tour like eight months ago. Boom. So there you go. I showed the back. There's a little shot of the front. Take a screenshot and post it in the group if you want. There you go. Um... That's how in tune with my people I am. That's really cool. Shout out to Damien, man. I appreciate the message, brother. I'm going to have to put that back up on my man again after this live stream. It stays in here. Andrew Dobson says, what was your first break in the game that got you noticed? Uh, uh, Dear Rappers. So it's funny, man. I was going through like a super duper dark time in my life. I've been making music for like 10 years. When I used to release a music video, I used to go through every single person on my friends list on Facebook and spam them with a link to my video and just beg people to watch my music videos. And it would still take like six or seven months to get 10,000 views. And after I was done with my friends list, I get my best friend's passwords to their Facebook and I'd spam their entire friends list too. Um, And after doing that for, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten years and having very little success, I was tired, I was exhausted, I was fed up, I was frustrated, I was bitter, I was angry. I was in a dark place and I was literally thinking about walking away from all this shit and just being done with the music entirely. I was living in the ghetto at the time. I was living in the ghetto, in a rundown house with cockroaches and mice. The ceiling was leaking every day. I'd wake up and have to sweep water out the kitchen. It was awful. 
And I was in a dark time. And I literally went and sat on the front step of that house. And I smoked my very last cigarette in my pack. And by the time I was done smoking that cigarette, I had written Dear Rappers. True story. I, rec I recorded it that day. I released it maybe a day and a half later. And the rest is history. So I don't know what you're going to take from that. But I just want to say, recounting that story. Um, yo, your greatest, greatest strengths will come in your darkest hour. So if shit seems bad, just keep hanging in there. Because like all in a moment, in an instant, everything can change. So just like stay strong, keep swinging away. <coughs> it's not about fighting and fighting and fighting. Sometimes it's just about enduring, enduring the darkness. Embrace it, don't fight it, endure it. And your light will come from within and you'll hit the road. So there's that. I'm looking through your questions here. Uh, Matt Jones says, what's a song you could listen to anytime? Absolute favorite. Jeez, man, that's tough. There's too much good music out there. Uh, I'm a huge Zeppelin guy. Probably anything by Zeppelin, anything by CCR. Uh... You know, I really like CCR because it's all good vibes, really easy listening to. It feels nostalgic. That's one of my favorite feelings in the world is that nostalgia. So probably like some CCR or some Zeppelin, if I'm being completely honest. Um, what's that song? I think it's by The Band. Take a load off Fanny. Take a load for free. Take a load off Fanny. Take off a load, 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 load. And put the low rate on me. I love that song. I can listen to that song while I'm brushing my fucking teeth forever. Forever I love that song. Um, I don't know why. I don't think the band is that great of a group or anything. It's just like, I guess there's just notes in that song that just touch me in my soul. I don't know what it is. Um, a lot of people are asking about concerts. Are you going to do a show in Maine? Are you going to do shit here, a show there, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I think I do actually have a show in Maine. If you have a question about me performing in your town, let's not flood the comments with that. Let's just go to hangovergang.com, click on the tour section, and look at all the tour dates because they're all right there. 22 dates in November all over the country. All the cities, venues, dates are listed. Ticket links are on my website. You can just click and get tickets. So you're good to go. Hangovergang.com. Jamie Casilla says, can we smoke a joint together if I bring one? Unfortunately, I don't smoke weed anymore. After I had like that mental breakdown, I quit smoking weed. I quit for like two years and then I picked it up again for like a month and it just didn't make me feel good anymore. So I just quit smoking weed. I only drink like once in a while now. So, um, you know, if you catch me on a real good day, I might have a beer with you, but probably not going to be smoking any weed. Low, 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 put the load right on me. Man, that's going to be stuck in my head. Uh, TJ Guptill says, you said that you meditate. Have you ever done flotation therapy? No, I've never done flotation therapy. I think you're referring to those isolation tanks with the salt water in them. Never done it. Always been super duper curious. Definitely, definitely going to do it at some point. Um, yeah, those things look really badass. So, yeah, absolutely. Melissa Butler says, do you like being recognized in public? What a great question. Um, I've never been asked that before. Do I like being recognized in public? Um, you know, I'm a super duper loner. I do like to keep uh, to myself. And because of the nature of my music, it's not always good to be uh, recognized in public. But I mean, I don't like being recognized in public. I don't dislike being recognized in public. When I do get recognized in public, I'm always friendly. I always shake hands. I always take the photos. I always take time to talk to people. Because um, I just remember when I was a kid, when 
if somebody that I loved, some famous person was out in public, and if I tried to talk to them and they were unfriendly to me, it was fucking heartbreaking, man. And it's just like, it's just lame. Um, like when my, my uh, sister and her boyfriend were here, I took them shopping and he's a big fan of like superheroes and shit like that. And the kid that played Spider-Man walked past us when we were shopping and he said, oh my God, that was so-and-so, the guy that played Spider-Man. I said, well, fuck, go say hello to him. And he's like, really? Should I? And I said, yeah, go say hi. So he ran over there and said, hey, man, like, I'm a big fan. Like, can I get a photo? And the guy in the Spider-Man dude kind of sloughed him off, told him to beat it. So oh, I'm on the phone right now, man. Like, no. And, uh, you know, he wasn't butt hurt about it. He didn't seem like he was upset or anything. But like, that's fucking lame, dude. It's lame. If you're going to make music or you're going to be an actor or you're going to be a big famous athlete or something like that and like that's part of your job is to embrace the people that embrace you. Why would you not be friendly to somebody that sees you and says, hey, love your movies, love your music, whatever it is. Why would you be a dick to that person or not give them the time of day? The only reason you're even in the position that you're fucking in right now is because of people like that that actually give a shit about you because nobody has to give a shit about you, bro. And if you feel like entitled that people need to care, you're a fucking idiot. So, yeah, I don't like it. I don't dislike it. I'm just cool, man. If you see me out and you want to say what up, say what up. Take a photo, shake a hand. We can talk for a few minutes, whatever the case may be. Uh, CJ is asking if I'll be performing the upcoming song on the next tour. Uh, yeah, I mean, if people like the song, it's one of my favorite songs. I really want to perform it. I think it would be an amazing song to perform, but I perform what, you know, what people love. So, um, if people love it, I'll perform it hundred percent. Justin asked, uh, what inspired you to do castles? I mean, essentially just like that house that I grew up in the in the hood where I was ready to give up on things that inspired me everybody that I talked about in castles you know the woman at the liquor store the guy on the front step the dude playing with the radio the guy at the bus stop those are all real people that I saw you know it started out with the lady at the liquor store I was there to get some juice or something and I saw her getting the cheapest can of beer on the shelf really and I wrote it down on my phone I see you at the liquor store leaving with the cheapest can of beer on the shelf you ain't living on the street, but you barely making rent. And I were late because I'm struggling myself. And then she smiled at the guy working there. I see you smile at the clerk. I just wish I had a little more to help because I wanted to give her some of my change. But like, I didn't have any money either. So, you know, that got me thinking. And then I was walking home through that neighborhood and I saw different people and I saw how everybody was having a hard time. So Castles was just about the collective struggle of people, man. That's really what it was. So... Uh, Ryan asks, would you ever start your own record label and take other artists in in the future? Absolutely. It's something I've thought about. Not this early on in my career. Right now, I really need to like focus on myself to make sure that this stuff works to the level that I want it to work to. So I don't have the energy to put into other people right now. But when I'm done and I hang up my boots, I definitely want to give back in some way, shape or form. So if that's, you know, signing a bunch of artists and kind of taking them under my wing and talking to them and helping direct them and navigate the industry, then yeah, that would be, I think that'd be a cool thing to do. I've, you know, I always really liked helping people like that. I was like, uh, there was a thing in Canada called Big Brothers and Big Sisters where you become like the big homie of like a, a kid who comes from like a broken home or something. So I did that a few times when I was a pro wrestler. I was the big brother and I got to hang out with some of those kids and help them along. So I've always really been big on like helping people and, uh, and aiding youth. So, yeah. So if I can do that through music, that'd be fantastic. Josh Barnes says, how do you know when you're done writing a song? Um, well, a song is usually three minutes and 30 seconds about. So I know I'm done the song when uh, all the space between zero seconds and three minutes and 30 is full of words. Um, flipping through your questions here. Patrick Henry says, do you realize that your music breaks through the Matrix's threshold? Well, I hope so, brother. That's my whole fucking thing here, man. 
coming to you live from the Matrix. This is the biggest thing about Hangover Gang. That's like goes back to the girl that asked, are you scared for your life and shit? Look, one of the, you know, the system does not like things that disrupt. And the, whether we like it or not, whether they like it or not, whether it was our intentions or not, Hangover Gang disrupts. Music disrupts. And I'm, I'm you know, I'm low-key proud of that shit. I'm glad that we're making a mark like that. I'm glad that we're waking people up and I'm glad that we're ruff, ruffling feathers. So yeah, I'm glad that you say it breaks through the, the matrix's threshold. That's what we're here for. Disrupt, baby. Uh, 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 uh. Somebody said, I just got here. What's the link to get autographed albums? www.hangovergang.com hangovergang.com you got 12 hours make it count mikey says i hoped i helped you as your boss back in van city let's roll to mexico kid hell yeah everybody congratulate mikey he's getting married right away we're going to mexico to party mikey was my boss back in vancouver when i was a carpenter because before the music thing worked out, I was swinging a hammer every single day. I was never very good at building shit, but I always worked really fucking hard. And, uh, yo, Michael tell you, man, Michael tell you, since the very beginning, I had a very, like, I had a good attitude, always a happy guy, but Mike was my boss. So Mike was the authority, which low key made Mike the enemy. So when me and Mike were getting along, we were cool. But when Mike you know, he's a boss. You got to tell you what to do. And he's got to be stern about it sometimes. So there was a couple times I told that guy to go fuck himself and he'd fire me. And then he'd hire me back the next day because he felt bad because he knew I was a good kid, but he knew I had a problem with authority. So that's how deeply rooted this authority shit was. Now I was getting fired left and right for telling people to fucking beat it. I was getting suspended and expelled for telling people to fucking beat it. This is a lifelong problem that I've had. Um, but anyway, shout out to Mike. Super good dude. Congratulations on your wedding, brother. I love you. And we'll see you in Mexico 100%. Um, okay, here we go here. I'm scrolling through your questions. Uh, 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 uh. Kyle says, what editing software do you use for your videos? Wow, the questions are getting thin. You guys are asking about software now. Uh, I use Final Cut for everything. Um, Jerry says, what does the X tattoo between your eyes mean? Uh, it's a lot of things, man. It's just X marks the spot, brother. It's where your third eye is. Um, also, like... Huge Rob Zombie fan growing up and all the uh, zombies and stuff had axes on their foreheads. Um, but yeah, it, it gets a lot deeper than that. But that's like a whole other conversation that I don't even know if the world's ready for. So I don't even really want to get into it and then have to explain it. And blah, 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 blah. So let's just, we'll leave it at that. Uh, Cody says, how did you end up on the Falling in Reverse tour? The lead singer of uh, Falling in Reverse, uh, Ronnie Radke, uh, reached out to me and said that he wanted me on the tour. I said to get his agent to get in touch with me. I talked to his agent about it. Um, and then I initially actually turned it down a couple of times because uh, I was just so busy. And then I got to know Ronnie and he was a really cool guy. And I listened to a lot of the band's music and loved it. And I was just like, fuck it. I want to hit the road with these guys. I love them. Um, the band's great. The music's great. The people are cool. So let's do the thing. So I put a couple things on pause, but we're going to rock out on that tour. 22 dates in November. Grab tickets at hangovergang.com. Okay, so I'll circle back one time. If... Uh, if you just joined, I got a brand new video dropping this Friday at 9 a.m. There's two ways to see it first. You can join the Hangover Gang newsletter or you can subscribe to YouTube. If you join the newsletter, I will personally email you Friday morning with a link to the video. You'll see it before anybody else. If you subscribe to YouTube, turn your notification bells on so you get notified when the video drops. Uh, 
The artwork for the song drops tomorrow. So if you want to know what the song is about and you want to speculate about it, meet me here tomorrow at 9 a.m. I'll drop the artwork. It's going to let the cat out of the bag. You guys can have at her. Um, there's 12 hours for everybody to... Uh, I don't know where I put them. The 12 hours remain until I send out the first shipment of albums, which will be tomorrow morning, and then another shipment the next day. So if you want an autographed album of either one of my albums, or you want to get them together in a pack, go to hangovergang.com. There's 20 songs on Death Threats, 21 songs on Ghost Stories. It's like four and a half or five hours of music together. I autograph them all personally, package them personally, label them personally, and ship them personally. I just grabbed 20 more ski masks for people because they seem to be in high demand. The first 50 sold out really quick. All I could really afford was to grab 20 more. So there's 20 more in the store, hangovergang.com. We already talked about it, but we'll talk about it again. 22 shows coming up in November. Hit hangovergang.com for all tour dates, cities, venues, and tickets. Hangovergang.com. That's where all my shit goes down. You want to buy merch? You want tickets to a show? You want to see a video? You want to know what the hell's going on in my life? Hangovergang.com. I will put the links for signed albums. I'll put the links for the newsletter. I'll put the links to subscribe. I'll put the links to everything we've talked about in the comments of this video as soon as we're done. When you see my comment, give it a like, push it to the top of the feed and make it easier for everybody else to find it. I'd appreciate that. I'm just scrolling down here to the bottom of the feed. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it. This was good. You guys feel good about this? Did you guys feel good about this live stream? Did you feel good about it? I felt pretty good about it. I think it was a good one. I think there were some funny moments. There were some deep moments. Got all the information out there into the world. Man, it just keeps blowing me away. Like Wednesday evening and there's a thousand of us hanging out here together. I can't even tell you guys how much that means to me. Thank you guys for spending your Wednesday night with me. That is super friggin' cool. Can't wait to see you guys on the road. Yo, know, and on the topic of those people, you know, hating on me because I'm always trying to sell merch. Like I said, man, no record label, no agent, no manager, no nothing. It's just me. So if you're supporting me by purchasing albums or t-shirts or ski masks, it goes directly to me, man. And I really appreciate that. For the people that have a problem with me trying to sell stuff, fuck you. I got dogs to take care of. I got a girlfriend to feed. And I got a house to pay for. So um, I love you guys. Thank you so much. Um, and I know how hard it is to part with your hard-earned dollars. Like we already talked about, I was a carpenter for a long time. I was swinging a hammer for years and years and years and years and years. I know how hard it is to part with a dollar. A dollar that you worked super fucking hard for. So if you decide to part with your dollars with me, that means the world, man. Thank you so much. There's not a big enough thank you I could give you. So I'll just leave it at this. Brand new video drops this Friday, 9 a.m. The artwork drops tomorrow at 9 a.m. I cannot wait to give this one to you guys. It's special to me, like I said. I cried when I was making it. I hope it touches you guys when you listen to it. That's the point of this one. It is a big, big song. Uh, it's a special record, and I hope it hits you in the feels like it hit me in the feels. 9 a.m. tomorrow, I'll drop the artwork. 9 a.m. Friday morning, I'll drop the video. I can't wait till you guys see it. To anybody out there that's going through a hard time, man, like I said, sometimes it's not about fighting. Sometimes it's just about enduring. If you're going through a dark time, hang in there. Eventually, the light will come from within. Even the bumpiest roads eventually run smooth. The clouds will break and things will work themselves out. Sometimes all you got to do is endure. Fight when you can. When you're too tired, just hang in there. I love you guys from the bottom of my friggin' heart. They laugh at us because we're different. We laugh at them because they're all the same. Sometimes you got to walk through hell to get where you want to go. And if you're going to walk through hell, make sure you walk in like you own the motherfucker. I love you guys. It's Hangover Gang Forever. New video on Friday at 9 a.m. I'll see y'all then. Have a good Wednesday evening. Peace.